All right, so on the inside, we look at the different types of stoves. We're gonna um, learn how to cook outside. So I've got the isobutane setup uh, and the titanium pot, and we do something fairly simple. Uh, there's definitely some fancier meals. Um, this is, we're gonna show you an example of just heating up water that we'd use for potentially a freeze-dried packet. Um, and this morning we will make some Wisconsin cheddar mashed potatoes. And this is an example of something that has like adding butter and other things, but we're just gonna add two cups of water uh, and, and go with that. I'd probably add oil if I was out in the backcountry just to get some more fat and calories. This is only got 110 calories, so not a whole lot, but mainly to learn how to use the stoves. So, get everything out. Got my fuel canister, take the little lid off. Get my little tiny micro stove. Can you explain the principle here? Yeah, I did inside, so oh, okay. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, oh, that's right, you told me that. And so this is the type of stove that's relatively inexpensive, but uh, heats fast. So it's probably the easiest, best stove to get first if this is all new to you. This has little feet that need to flip out and lock into place. So that's what the stove, the pot's gonna sit on top of. And then I'm gonna make sure that the valve is closed. Uh, the, this valve is closed before I screw this in so it's not leaking gas immediately. You'll hear a little bit of a hiss as this opens the valve and then seals. Okay, there we go. And then, not super tight, and I got just a little whiff of gas as that came out. Okay, now it's not very windy today, but this is some of the issues you're gonna face out in the real world, is that getting a flat spot, spot to sit this, um, before I start cooking, I'm gonna look for some place that once I put this on, full of water on top, that's not gonna fall over or fall over easily. So there's two things I'm gonna do. I'm looking for a sturdy place for that to sit. Sometimes these stoves have little feet uh, little tripods that help. Um, I have one of those but didn't bring it with me. Uh, and then, again, it's not windy today, but it almost always is when you're cooking. And so you'll need some kind of windscreen uh, that will block the wind and that will decrease the amount of fuel you use. So it's, that's the key reason you've got a windshield is it's gonna decrease the amount of food that you can, or fuel you're gonna use. So I'm gonna kind of set that up so you can see how it would work, and then I'm gonna take it away when we uh, cook some more. Now the water, um, a couple things with water. If I was gonna boil this for a while, I could potentially take it straight out of the stream and the boiling would um, clean the water of any anything that would, viruses or bacteria that would hurt me. Or if I'm trying to conserve fuel, I'll filter the water into my water bottle or into my pot and use that filtered water. So in this case, I'm just gonna bring it to boil and use it to eat with. So I would definitely want to f uh, filter this first. And again, I typically do that because that saves on fuel and usually your filter has more capacity um, than you have fuel than you're carrying. So overall you carry less weight. Now how much water to put in here? I know that my mashed potatoes take about two cups of water uh, and then I'm gonna heat a little bit more for cleanup. You might want to point out that it's important to fill up the cup when it's not sitting on the stove. I think the first time I tried to use that stove, I was... Oh, I'm pouring it while it was on here. Yeah. And then it would, would fall over. And you can see kind of how pr precarious that is. So now that I've got that on there, uh, I'm going to look for a little bit sturdier spot to sit that. And again, this is probably the most important thing to do. Because once you've got a stove that's lit and you've made dinner, you don't want your dinner to end up on the rocks, in the grass, uh, and you don't want a, a flaming stove that you've got to somehow handle and turn off after it's fallen over. And this is where you're using stuff all around you, you're using rocks, you're clearing away stuff, um, you know, leaf no trace principles still apply, uh, that you want to minimize your damage. Um, but you may move stuff and make a little stove area and then disassemble it later. Okay, so I'm going to take that off and I'm going to light it. So I'm going to Light the lighter, and then turn on the gas. Now notice, I can hear it going. I can't see it very well. I can just kind of see a little bit of waviness in the area. And this is where you'd want to make sure you don't burn yourself. So if the people are on you, make sure they know that that's on. I can go low, I can go high. And then I'm gonna make sure that's kind of 
the center down there. And again, for this to boil more quickly, the lid. Now this is one of those pots that this handle, there's an odd heat coming around the outside. This handle is going to get hot. Um, so I'm going to use a hat or a bandana or something when I pick that up later. And then, again, if the wind was bad, I'd have this around here blocking the wind. Not completely. These little gas canisters can't overheat and explode. I've never heard of that happening, but it is a warning on the side uh, about using windshields. So I've got a little bit of access to the side, and I may want to set up the access so that I can get to the, the flame adjuster. And again, I can go up or down. People talk about how fast they can get water to boil, like a jet boil, like how fast. Like, I didn't go to the back country to like cook in a minute and a half. So I typically not worry about taking my time. Uh, so I don't have scientific evidence of this, but I think having a, a kind of a low to moderate heat, you probably use less fuel than if you turn it into a jet engine and, and waste a lot of that heat. Because you can certainly feel a lot of waste heat coming around the sides. All right, and we're gonna leave this rolling. Uh, and you know, a real YouTube video would speed that up, so you didn't have to sit here and watch it, watch it go. But I want you to have some sense of how long that's gonna take to boil. And our side entertainment is we will use this other stove, this little alcohol stove, and we'll get it going too. So maybe I'm heating up some water for some hot cocoa, which is an essential backcountry item. Again, as Lori suggested, peeling water. Oops, gonna waste that water. Filtered it. Um, and then the alcohol stove has a lid. Or actually, this is a this is to put out the, the, the flame. A little cover. I've got some alcohol that I've already put in there. And then I've got my little titanium bracket that the Hot sits on. This one is a little bit tricky to light, is that you cannot see the flames, especially when it's so bright. So I'm gonna I'm gonna light it first. And then it's almost just by feel. So that's lit, even though it doesn't seem like it. So this is an easy one to spill and it cause burns if you don't pay attention to that fire. At night it'll have a light blue color. Um, and then this is one that this will go slowly so this will take much longer um, so it's not pressurized like this is uh, to heat that water now one temptation is just to walk away and leave this uh, I've seen people do that I think it's a bad idea that you should have one person in the group that's who's watching the stove you don't want your food to boil over put out your stove, make a mess that you gotta clean up later. You're just boiling water now, so it'd just be boiling over water. But despite the, uh, the phrase of a watch pot never boils, I'm checking this every now and then. Looking at the bubbles at the bottom, I can see they'll slowly get bigger, and then I'll start to get uh, a rolling boil. And that'll be all that we'll do. In the meantime, I might be cleaning up things and putting away stuff. Uh, if it's windy, stuff might be blowing away. I'm gonna get out my mashed potatoes and put it in this bowl here. I don't have the fancy backpacking bowls. This is something that's 50 cents from Walmart. Super lightweight, easy to clean, durable. Really, that's all you need. That is gonna be barely fit in there. So we'll see how that goes. It'd be better if I had two bowls and was sharing that with somebody. For my hot cocoa, I've got one of these little collapsible cups. And usually you're cooking for more than one person, so you know you're generally getting your stuff ready for other people. They may be setting up camp and setting up the tent, and while you're cooking, they're getting uh, your stuff ready. I'm also listening to that stove, listening to if there's any indication that it's going out. Uh, some of those gas canisters little burp or whatever and the, my flame will go out and I'll just be releasing gas and the, the flame's not lit any longer. So I'm listening to kind of that roar of an actual fire. I got some trash, this, all this little stuff. I'm always like putting it into one container. Usually have a Ziploc that that was my trash bag. I'm 
spoon ready. If we were doing freeze dried, I'd, I'd open this up. Uh, you don't just pour your water straight in here right away. There's going to be a desiccant package in here. There's going to be a little thing that keeps it dry. So make sure you find that. Sometimes it's buried at the bottom. Um, and I tend generally kind of slightly stir the mixture in there so you don't end up with this like all the flavor down in the bottom corner. So you're going to open this up, get the desiccant out, and then again find some place that you're going to fill this with boiling water and it's going to sit for like 10 minutes. So you're trying to find some place that you can set that that it's not going to flip over, prop it up against something or whatever. Um, Alright, so if you're doing freeze dried, and of course you're kind of paying attention to how much water. Always add a little bit more water than they say. It just means that you're a little bit more hydrated and it's less likely you're eating little powdered freeze dried stuff. Should right. I pause? No, don't pause. We're gonna watch this and sit here and just hang out and tell jokes. Got some camping jokes for me. My arm's getting tired. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting to see a little steam off the top. Um, I can go look at the chickens. You want to do a, a chicken side show? <laughs> I'm at least going to pan over it. Zoom in. All right, checking everything. You back over here. All right. So I got both stoves going. I can see some of the yellow flames on, on, on this. Uh, if it's burning well, it should be blue and hard to see. So that's not burning if it, as efficiently as it could, but it's actually starting to heat that water already. Um, and again, like if you think about where you're most likely to get hurt on a trip, actually while you're cooking, burns, especially in your hands, is one of the most likely places to get hurt on a trip. Um, so again, like this pot handle is gonna get hot, this heat shield may be getting hot um, and so I'm kind of like making sure that's again why I have one person to cook because they're gonna know what's hot and what's not um, I'm paying attention to all that stuff and when I pour this water out uh, I need to be careful I've also pulled this little flipper up on this lid up so again that's not getting too hot um, and so I can check that and we're almost to a boil so what was that like two maybe three minutes maybe felt like 30 minutes but it didn't take too long. So like those super fast stove systems that, that heat up really fast, and if you're looking to buying a stove, I don't worry too much about that. They do use a little less fuel, um, but they're a lot more expensive. Okay, so I definitely have some boilage here. And so I'm gonna turn that off before it boils over. And all right, find something. So that is likely really hot right there. Uh, so I'm going to use my hat and make my mashed potatoes here. Perfect thing for breakfast. Again, making sure I don't want to knock this over now that I've heated it up and I've filtered all that water. Find some place sturdy to set that. I generally don't like people holding it, so I try to set it down so that I'm not pouring boiling water on someone's hand. And I'm not sure exactly how that's going to pour. So this certainly isn't like fancy cooking and you know I'll leave that to you guys to figure out how to make real backcountry meals instead of just instant mashed potatoes. This you just add the water and it's good to go. This absorbs a lot. So it's going to look runny here at first. Mix that up. And by the way, instant mashed potatoes on a backcountry trip, it's like great comfort food. Really salty. Put a little bit of oil in there, it's got some fat. I don't know if I'd want to eat this whole packet um, by myself, but sharing it with somebody as part of a meal would be pretty good. This also cleans up really well. There's not a whole lot of stuff to stick to the, to the pan or burn to the bottom of the pot. some water there for a moment okay that's almost boiling there on my alcohol stove so that doesn't have to be quite boiling I'm gonna go with that oops that's really hot Makes my 
knees sometimes tilt over. And then I got a little extra water in both these. I'll put the lid back on to keep that kind of warm. That's going to be my cleanup water later. All right, breakfast of mashed potatoes uh, and hot cocoa. Perfect. Good luck. Oh my gosh, it's some mashed potatoes. They're really good, especially with that cheese. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention was, like when you're done, again, in the name of safety, you got to take all this stuff apart and avoid. Um, burning yourself. So the stove is going to be really hot for a while. These little tiny ones actually cool down fairly quickly. What I didn't show you is how to turn off uh, the alcohol stove since it doesn't have a switch. So it's got this little uh, base on it to put the stove on. What I have to do is, it's not lit right now, but I can't, uh, this is a little snuffer that I want to put over the top to snuff out the flames. So I have to like flip that off. It, imagine that's still burning. And then I take that and kind of drop it over the top. And that'll put it out, but then I'll have to wait a while before I do anything uh, in order for me to, to put it away. Now this little guy, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of do this, you know, touching it for a while and see if it's still hot, so that's now cool. Uh, and then to take it apart, these are, are fairly simple. Again, I've got the valve, I know that's off, and I'll hear a little bit of hiss of gas when I unscrew this. Not much at all. I mean, the main thing to check is that this thing, uh, this gas canister reseals. Not that you have a whole lot of control over it if it doesn't. There is a little valve in here that you, if you take a little piece of metal or a little like paper clip, you can punch that valve and kind of ch 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 check it and help it to seal. And that's one of the troubleshooting things if you can't get this to work is you kind of make sure that that's actually going to open. Um, and then for these, you're just folding up the, the legs a little, legs again. And then for this one to get in the bag, I've got to turn the valve a little bit, flip up the little little arm. And then the perennial thing is like, what did I do with the little bag? You see it, Lori? Uh -huh. Now, a couple things when putting your stuff away. This is one of those things that will, if it's not burning cleanly, if you have a lot of wind, you will get soot all over this and you'll get it on your hands. Um, and so you want to be careful that it's almost impossible not to get it on your hands, but you don't want to get it all over your backpack and stuff. So that's one of these, why these little baggies are, are nice. And then the same thing with putting away your pot, I'll pour this hot water into the other one, is that you're going to get a little bit of soot at the bottom and that will get all over your stuff inside your pack. Um, so again, having some kind of bag that you're putting your pots in, you're going to keep it from getting all over the rest of your, of your backpacking stuff. I typically don't wipe it off during the trip. I'll wait till later. So if you're cooking over a fire, you're gonna get a lot of soot over your over your pots. And then you, you definitely need something to, to put that in so the soot doesn't get everywhere. So kind of like you do at home, being safe, not getting burnt, kind of keeping things tidy. The cooking area is one of those places that you can accidentally leave stuff. So like I'm really making sure that I got everything packed away, everything has its place. And, and therefore I don't find out when I get to the next campsite 10 miles down the trail uh, that I've left the lighter or I've, I've left one of these little pieces. So lots of little things you could lose uh, for your backpack and stuff. All right. You gonna put the cap on there? You wanna put the cap on that? I guess I will. All right. That's satisfying. And then I nest everything else, put it back in, in its bag, goes back in my pack and we're good to go for our, the next 20 mile trail segment.